Let's explore the language services offered by H2O.ai. H2O.ai released two open sources product to further contribute to its mission to democratize AI and generative AI. H2O LLM Studio and H2O GPT were released. I will talk a bit later about H2O LLM Studio. H2O GPT serves as our research and development playground and is where we rapidly integrate and test the most recent LLM research. It combines both image and text generation, summarize and translate text, works with documents to ground the LLM responses with the context relevant to the query of the user. It can be deployed offline without any connection to the internet. The user can compare multiple models at the same time to understand how they compare and how they differently they will answer the query. There is different settings that can be tweaked, including the type of prompt. This can be very useful when needing to have answers related to programming or coding instructions, for example. In addition to this, the user can load documents that will ground the model responses. Open Source H2O GPT helped us develop our enterprise offering with H2O GPT E which offers both a user interface and backend to chat with your documents, create and manage collections of documents and chats. It uses retrieval augmented generation to ground the answer of the LLM used from the user questions or prompts. Similarly to H2O GPT, you can select the LLM you would like to use for your task. The enterprise offering also address enterprise needs when it comes to access restrictions, being able to share collections, documents, and chat with others, or in contrary, restrict it. It also allows on-premises deployment and air gap installations with our support, admin capabilities, cost tracking, and of course, while maintaining the best developer experience, we also offer a single API for multiple LLM models with RAP capabilities with only a few lines of code. Let's have a look at it. I will start by presenting you a quick overview of the notebook, showcasing some of the things you can do with Enterprise GPT Python client. After installing the Python library, here 1.3.9, I can log into the environment I've just shown earlier and interact with it. I can chat with documents or collections of documents, in particular here, a collection I've already prepared containing the Gartner instructions for this demo. Question is, how can I best ensure I successfully submit my submission to Gartner? And this is the answer I get. So I can ensure to follow those instructions to answer the submission. Prompt fragged and LLM settings are available for the users to tweak within the API, in particular to, to be able to customize the prompt to best answer the task at hand. The rack settings as well can be used to modify, for example, the methodology that is best suiting to grant the answer from the LLM. Finally, the LLM settings as well are available, whether this is the type of model you're using or some of the very specific LLM parameters. This will obviously impact the answer you're going to receive. You can also perform lexical and semantical search against your document. But for now, let's have a look at a few of the H2O GPT powered application that integrates and use the API we have just seen. We have found many use cases in many verticals from banking to investment, digital advertisement, customer services, fast moving consumer goods, where LLM comes handy and where the H2O Enterprise GPT API is used. Let's have a look at a few applications in various verticals. In banking, for example, loan default prediction could be analyzed via the use of the contributors, which are influencing or contributing to the likelihood of defaulting on a loan. You could simulate this and create a feature story using LLMs. In the digital advertisement world, we can think that advertisements are automatically checked and compared against the policies of various platforms that they are targeting, like Meta, Amazon, Instagram, etc., to see if they are compliant. Topics and sentiment analysis can be done on reviews, for example, which are publicly available, can be analyzed to be summarized and be understood to find out what are the topics and sentiment associated for the customers. This can be also analyzed over time. SEC feelings can also be used to chat with them and understand the health of a company at any time. Finally, one of the application is via the use of AI agent, which are here to augment and complete resources, for example, in customer services. We're going to take here the example of an AI bank assistant. Let's take a look. Hello, this is Liam Chen from Vista Valley Credit Union. How are you doing today, Audrey? Hi, I would like to block my card, please. Sure. 
I can help you with that, Audrey. In order to block the card, I need to know the reason for blocking and the card number. Could you please tell me the reason for blocking the card? Sure. The reason for blocking the card is that I've lost it. My card number is 987987. Thank you for providing the information, Audrey. To confirm, you want to block your card because you've lost it, and the card number is 987987, correct? Yes, correct. Great. I have all the necessary information. Is it correct that you want me to block your card because you've lost it, and the card number is 987987? May I proceed with blocking the card? Please proceed with blocking the card. Thank you for confirming, Audrey. I have now successfully blocked the card. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? No, thank you. The H2O platform enables its users to fine-tune their own LLM models from open source foundational models. We provide several tools for the user to prepare, fine-tune, evaluate, and deploy his own fine-tuned proprietary LLM model in their H2O environment. Furthermore, the model can also be selected as the LLM used in Enterprise H2O GPT. Let's check out first H2O LLM Data Studio. H2O LLM Data Studio allows the user to curate from existing data they would like to use or prepare from existing data that they want to clean and structure for their downstream task. In addition to that, they can augment their data with external open source data of various sources. The user can use their own unstructured data to create Q&A pairs. The format of the data can be varied, PDF, docs, MP3, etc. The user can also choose to prepare existing data that were preloaded to use further down the line for the task at hand, question answering, chatbot conversation, or instructioning. Finally, the user can augment its own data with existing open source data, depending on the use case at hand again. Let's get back to prepare and let's use an existing data set and find out about the workflow we can use. Here, we have a question and answer columns already existing, but we'd like to modify it. The things that we see is the workflow, which contains things like cleaning, removal of sensitive information, augmenting the data, removal of profanity, and so on. This is very important as this is the data that the LLM models will see further down the line when you fine tune it. So any removal of sensitive information, profanity, etc., will be very useful. You can configure that if you wish, whether this is on the text cleaning, the profanity check levels, and so on. The data will now be filtered based on that workflow, and we will be able to use that data for LLM Studio, our open source fine tuning user interface. H2O LLM Studio is an open source no code platform which provides an easy to use front end to fine tune foundational LLMs or large language models. It can use low memory footprint fine tuning techniques such as low rank adaptation or LoRa and A-bit model training. Furthermore, the large language model developed can be then directly exported to the Hugging Face Hub, be deployed on H2O MLOps platform, or even added as one of the large language models in Enterprise H2O GPTE. With the Apache 2 license, it allows the end users to create their own proprietary LLM model, including for commercial purposes. H2O LLM Studio presents itself this way with an overview of the instance we are running and the experiments and data sets we have available. In the settings section, we can add keys for Kaggle, Neptune, or OpenAI, whether this is used to upload your final model, use OpenAI to evaluate your final model, or finally use Neptune to track your experiments. The first steps would be to import the data sets for example, data we have created, prepared, and filtered in LLM Data Studio. Once the data set is uploaded, the user can specify the prompt column or user prompt query, the answer column, the expected output, and in the case of chain conversation, the parent ID column. Let's continue. We can also use preloaded open source data, for example, question and answers or instruction and output preloaded data, as well as human feedback-based data containing a question along with two answers, one rejected and one chosen, to teach LLM models to provide more responsible, more safe or coherent and relevant responses. Let's create an experiment. H2O LLM Studio supports multiple 
problem types, including causal language modeling for conversational chatbots, for example, modeling here using human feedback, sequence to sequence modeling used for translation and summarizations, and causal classification modeling, which is just an LLM based classification model. The settings used here are optimized for novice user and can be used as a first iteration. Let's have a look at a completed experiment. Here, we have a few information about the training process, a summary of the experiment and how to use it with Hugging Face Transformers, some train data insights, validation predict insights. We can see the configuration used in this experiment. And finally, we can chat with the model to get instant feedback. I'll chat with the LLM we just built and perhaps check that the LLM adopted the language style that we enforced in the data we used. Next step is to push this to Hugging Face. I've been now successfully pushed to Hugging Face and I can double check directly on the Hugging Face page. Let's now deploy it onto H2O MLOps. I'm using the LLMOps client to deploy my model onto H2O MLOps. I've already logged into the environment and I'll create a project. Brilliant. Let's add the Hugging Face path of my model. Now it's been successfully registered as a model version. And I can check which version it is and see the configurations. Let's deploy it now. My fine tuned model has now been successfully deployed onto H2O MLOps. I can see it into the user interface as healthy. Let's now check H2O Eval Studio, our evaluation tool for LLMs and RAG. H2O Eval Studio is a modular and extensible studio for retrieval augmented generation and large language model evaluation. It aims to provide a systematic assessment of RAG and LLM performance, reliability, security, fairness, and effectiveness in various applications. For this, Eval Studio provides a collection of RAG and LLM evaluators that we're seeing here to be used in RAG and LLM application development and operations. Then you can upload documents you would like the LLM and RAG to be evaluated against. This same documents will be used within test set case that you can create as well to evaluate the LLM model against using those various evaluators here. Let's create a new document using the Coca-Cola Quattery review results. We select the URL and we can create the document. Now let's create our first test. Let's collect my first test. We can give a brief description about the test and we can select the document it will refer to here, the Coca-Cola document we just uploaded. Now I can create a new test case in that test set. I'll give a prompt against I want the LLM and RAG to be evaluated against. Here, what was the revenue of Brazil? I know the answer and I'm expecting the LLM and RAG to find it too. Let's go now to leaderboard and we can create a new leaderboard. I can use the evaluator here, tokens presence or answer correctness. I select the test I've just created. and I can create the leaderboard. Brilliant, the report is done now. H2O Label Genie helps the user with their annotation task, including for NLP data. Let's have a look at the data sets and let's select the Amazon review data, which contain both stars and reviews from Amazon products. Let's assume here that the goal is to define or label the review sentiment that is between positive or negative. The task at hand here is classification and Label Genie is going to use zero shot classification. Although we could use Generative AI, by both using prompt engineering and LLM, we can prompt the LLM to give us the sentiment of the comment and help us with the annotation task here. Let's keep it this way. I'm going to add the class positive here and negative. 
I'm going to change the hypothesis for the zero shot text classification and put the sentiment of this review is. Let's continue and let's wait for the zero shot classification to give me clue about whether the review is likely to be positive or negative. Brilliant. This one is likely to be negative. I could try and read it or I could be happy and confirm it. I can continue until I finish to complete my annotation task. H2O Hydrogen Torch is our no-code platform to train state-of-the-art deep neural network in applications such as computer vision, audio, and natural language processing. Let's have a look. First, I can import data set or I can use the pre-existing data set. Let's use today Amazon review text, which contains reviews from Amazon and the sentiment associated with each review, positive or negative. Let's create an experiment here. This is a text problem and I'm going to be doing classification. I can change the experience level as well as perform grid search. For now, we'll leave the default settings, which have been optimized to be performing well in most cases. For now, let's have a look at a completed experiment. Hydrogen Torch provides with charts from the training process, a summary of the experiment, and metrics, which gives a view of the performance of the model that's been just trained. Here, the performance is quite good. I can see some trained data insights, validation prediction insight with the probability and the predicted label, as well as the true label. Finally, the validation interpretation insights is quite useful to understand how the model created these labels here. For example, we see that great here had a positive connotation and probably helped with the positive labeling here. On the other hand, gold here is judge negative, although other elements in the review suggest that that could be overall a positive review and was given a positive label, as was the true label. The logs that config are available and deployments is only away from one click.